in the studio it's been way too long his uh his pedigree <laughs> runs a mile long so i'm just going to give you some highlights he, number one he's grammy nominated he's guitar virtuoso his uh his guitar work has backed up robin ford branford Mar- marsalis david sanborn liz wright george howard bill withers to name just a few he tur- toured the world with branford's band uh, he's released two solo records, Life Before Midi and Life Before Midi Naked. Uh, he played in Robin Ford's band. Um, I love this quote. Carl's playing is like a Japanese haiku that can paint a beautiful picture in just a few notes, what would take others a hundred to do. He's been described as zen-like and Hendrixian in the same sentence. And he's also an unbelievable uh, producer. He's got a real passion for music production. Includes Larry Carlton's Grammy-nominated recording of Deep Into It uh, and the single Morning Magic. You can hear his stuff all over TV shows like Extra, TMZ, Pawn Stars. Um, He's even featured in the cartoon show Teen Titans Go! Um, Let's see if we can interrupt this funky style of Carl Burnett and talk with him a little bit. Carl, what's happening, man? What's happening, Brad? Didn't mean to interrupt that. I was really enjoying that, man. How's it going? It's great. Been way too long since we've had you back here at True Fire, right? It has. Your first project was Funk Guitar Survival Guide. Survival Guide. That is one of our most popular courses. Um, folks love the survival guides, but they love that kind of funk guitar thing as well. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, there, you know, when you talk about funk, you know, you think about the seventies and funk bands in the seventies, but right. funk is very much alive in almost every style of music. Right. Even today. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about why you think that is. Well, any anything that has to do with music feeling good is coming from a groove perspective. <laughs> right. And whether it's funk or pop or rock or whatever the style is, the groove is is was propelling it. You know, for to to bring people into into the feeling. If you, you know, you can go back to the days of American Bandstand when they would have the you know they play the song from the day and then inevitably when they would say Dick Clark would go, "What did you like about the song?" The answer was always the same, the beat. Right. You know, so, you know, and as a guitarist, you know, that's one of the elements that that you can also bring to the rhythm section because guitar uh, can't be a strong rhythmic uh, pulse, you know, through, through, a, through a piece. It's got that kind of percussive thing. It, absolutely. Right? Especially when you're playing, I guess, you know, what you would describe as a funky guitar part. Yes. Um, there's a lot of kind of percussive technique involved in that. Right. Can you talk a little bit about uh, and demonstrate a little bit about what, what you would consider a funky guitar technique? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you know, a lot of it or some of it can can have to do with with what I, I guess you would call choking, that that your your attack is qu- your release is quick, and that's part of it. I mean, you can hear it on on, on countless James Brown grooves, but just that that percussive, that drive, you know, whether it's it's that, you know, it's not a loose thing. It's it's tight. You know, and and that poppiness—that's what you're talking about. That percussive feel, and yep. uh, and then and then it's taking on the 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 feel of the of the of the drums. Yeah. You know. Do you know in tablature 
it's all those X's you oh see, my goodness. right? <laughs> you know, right? Whenever you see like a, a funk guitar part, it's got a know, lot of scratch. It's got more X's in it than notes, right? Yeah, you know, and and to say that, even if you're just doing this, but it's always you have to know where your reference is coming from. Yeah, you know, so. That's why, you know, when I'm giving my instructions, I always stress pra practicing with a metronome. So you have a point of reference of where the, where the, you know, where the quarter note is because everything is fitting around that. So yep. without that, you're just playing music out into the, with no point of reference. And right. that's the key, you know, and if we're not even playing it, and I start a rhythm. Then you already know What's about the drop? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, we were talking at lunch. I, I think it was Josh Smith, who's you know an incredible blues guitar player. It's monster. And yes. I think he was the one that said, "Josh, forgive me, or if you if you didn't say that for you know whoever did say it, forgive yeah. me for not remembering correctly." But he said, "If you want to learn how to play great rhythm guitar, go turn on any James Brown record and just." play with it over and over again, day after day. Over and over. Over and over. Yes. So it's, there's a lot of right hand stuff happening there. Not right just the hand. muting on the left, but yeah. talk about the right hand a little bit, if you would. Well, one thing, you know, that, that can be, uh, that maybe some aren't always aware of is the dynamics of the playing with, with, the, with the picking. I mean, with the strumming. You know, so even when you're, if you're doing constant 16th notes, even if you're just, that's very one dynamic. But if I change that to, it's a, it takes on a whole other, mm -hmm. you can, you hear that because that's the dynamics in the right hand. So that. You know, that in combination with what you're doing, you know, with your left hand and the choking in it, they all come together to create the perfect, you know, that's where the feel's coming from, yeah. you know. Um, so the right hand, a, a lot of, you know, for me has to do with the right hand, with the dynamics of the, of the strum, you know. Yep. Um, a, 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 a groove can take on a completely different feel if, if with, with rigid, It's subtle, but it's not just chicka chicka chicka. And sometimes right. that works great. Um, I mean, now Rogers, I think, has a very even kind of a, but, yeah. but his his stuff really drives too. Yeah. So, it, you know, you begin to sort of like the difference between like straight and swung kind of and, rhythm, and that and that too, and. And, and and it's once you, you know, begin to increase your listening that you just pull from these different areas to develop what makes you hopefully begin to sound like you. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think, uh, you know, you're just continuing to build upon these things. And when you're yeah. talking about groove guitar, I mean, you know, the, the James Brown library is, is super. And I think the next thing I would go to which inspired a lot of my playing early on was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh yeah, and uh, and and Al McKay's rhythm work through anything that's on any yeah. of those albums. Un unbelievable! It's just an incredible feel. I mean, and his playing is of course rooted in, in the, you know, the old school yeah. you know, R and B. The yeah. start with Curtis Mayfield's playing, and 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 that's and. And what some may not even realize, you got to check out, you know, anything that Ray Parker may have been playing yep. on. I mean, everybody <laughs> all automatically goes to Ghostbusters, right. <laughs> but Ray's guitar playing yeah. is, you know, uh -huh. no joke. No joke. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about um, you're here this week uh, filming two new courses. Yes. Let's talk about the first one, Take Five Groove Guitar. Okay. Right? Um, yes. What is groove guitar? How would you define that? Well, groove guitar, as I think I even said it in within the course, the key element is groove. Mm -hmm. 
and 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 that's about staying consistent in the part that you have fallen into and not deviating away from that because that's what's creating the energy that infectious momentum that's going to draw your listener in mm -hmm. and and some uh you think oh well that's that's really simple to do but i would i would say that if you're going to play the exact same thing consistently for the next three or five minutes, no, that's not really that easy to do no, it's not. without deviating. I mean, of course, it's easy now because people will cut little snippets and loop right. them over and over <laughs> again. It. But that's the idea. If you can become that live loop that keeps that rhythm, rhythmic consistency and you know melodic consistency within what you're playing, that's uh, that's paramount. That's what you got to do. So yeah. in this take five guitar groove course mm -hmm. um you give us a little primer up yes, front yes. and then five uh performance yes, studies yes, right yeah let's play one so people can get an idea okay, for sure. what we're talking about sure Which, where do you where do you want to start Which um one? i think we're starting with I'm gonna let tommy take it out um tommy which one yeah. should we start with level one okay level one ready yeah sure You know, um, and we were talking about this before as well. That sounds pretty simple to do, but it's, it's not that simple. Right. You know, you've got that scratching going on in the right hand. Right. You know, that's always moving. And, you know, the little embellishments with your pinky there. Right. Just show that move, if you would. Okay. So that's what th that this course is focusing on. It's like when you have these these shapes that most of us start out learning when you're playing for like a D minor seven chord or A minor seven is finding those notes within the chord that, and then you raise up to that, to the fourth from the from the minor third. And that's just that little hammer on, just, mm -hmm. just add a, And then just, just took the whole thing down to A minor same you know same reference with the minor third going up to the fourth and and that's what I'm talking about creating that pattern the first one is doom doom bing and then the next one doom bing bing so that is it what's in there and then the rhythm coming in So that's where you have, when I was talking about the dynamics of those parts, of, so that those, the ends of the beats are de-emphasized. Then mm -hmm. the, it's coming down on the, on the chorus. So you get this. This kind know, of movement, that, right? Right, that's yeah. it. That, and that's what I'm talking about, the dynamics. You're just, that's the that's the underlying part that's fitting with this. That's what that's what's going on in my mind, you know. Right. And and, 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 and that's such yeah. an important part of. Um, you're a producer. You produce yes. a lot of stuff. So. Yeah. Remember, uh, you know, we were talking about Larry Carlton talking about when uh, you know as a guitar player he. 
he learned how to think like a producer. Right. What did he mean by that? Well, I, it, and of course, the countless sessions that Larry's played on, and I think probably what he means by that in thinking like a producer is that as you're playing, you should be producing your own self. Mm -hmm. and, and as a producer on a session, they're thinking about what makes the song work. It's not about feeding your own ego with the, the cool licks that you just learned right. and trying to throw everything at the song that has nothing to do with the song. Mm -hmm. So when he says that, and what I believe is true, is that you're thinking about what am I going to play that adds to the song, the experience mm -hmm. of the song, and and who can tell you what that may be? Mm -hmm. And that's where you're drawing from all of your repertoire to fit in, in that moment, what you believe is going to make the song work. Right. So and that's what he means. You're your own producer at that right. point. Right. You're not thinking about you, the guitar player, playing this cool part. And, you know, I think even though that was, a, you know, your level one etude or performance right. study there, you know, if you played that part in the context of a song, right, it would be all you would need to do to make that song move, right? Right, right. exactly. Yeah. So, station break. Yes, I always like to shout out to yes. all the folks that are tuning in here. Yeah. So you've got some fans tuned in from Ohio, awesome. Sacramento, California, West Michigan, Austria, Montreal, Johannesburg, South Africa, Cardiff in Wales, the capital city. New Orleans, and Transylvania. Oh, my goodness. It's a lot of different time zones, yes. isn't it? Um, and, and for the rest of you that are tuned in, please shout out where you're from, and, and we'll, shout, we'll shout back to you. And Make sure you uh, list in the chat there any questions you have for Carl, and we'll open it up for questions in a little while. Um, the, uh, what was that Bruno Mars tune, Uptown Funk? Yeah, sure. Okay. So... Um, I, I don't even know if you're aware of this, but you know that's a very funky track. It is okay. Yeah. That like dates back to the right. you know '70s funk, right, right there. Definitely. I mean, just classic moves, right. right? Right. Very simple guitar part. Right. Do you know there were I don't know tens of thousands of like you know activity on YouTube trying to you know what is he playing? Trying you know? to decipher what it. is that? Right. You know that's cool and. Um, and that relates to what we were also talking about this week, which is, you know, y y we're using a lot of R&B and funk grooves or soul grooves right. here. But you hear these moves, th those exact moves even you just played. Yeah. Singer, songwriters and sure. pop music. I mean, they're all over the place. So, Absolutely. you know, one of the things that we always try to communicate um, with a style like funk is it's. It's a style within a style. You right. can funk up anything, right. you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. How many funky blues tracks are there that use exactly these techniques right. you're talking about, right? right? Um, so let's show them another, another thing from uh, the Take 5 okay, sure. groove guitar course. Sure. Tommy, what level do you want to work with now? We're, we'll let Tommy call the shots. Starting with the top here, level 5. Level five. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Level five. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah. hold and, on. To and it. while you're thinking that through, go ahead, think it through. I'll tell them what, you know, for those of you new to the Take Five format, what we do is Carl gives you a nice primer on, you know, kind of groove guitar techniques. And then he five performance studies where he applies those kind of key yes. concepts and techniques. Um, starting with a basic one like this one, and each one will get a little bit more, let's say, <laughs> progressively sophisticated. So Tommy just took him from, you know, level, level one. one all the way to level yeah, five. Yeah, we went from one extension all the way to the other end of the meter. Some nice, easy eighth notes. Yeah. And now we're going to kick it up, I guess. All right. Let's see. We put you right on the spot there, man.
you know, you got to keep the groove going. Exactly. Um, that, <laughs> that was the other thing. You, you talked about it earlier about how, you know, even a simple, like, let's call it funky groove. Yes. Okay. That repeats over right. and over again has, you know, kind of uh, this incredible effect on a listening audience. Yes. You know? Just like the more you repeat it, the more that time goes on, the whole thing kind of changes, doesn't it? It's Absolutely. like a primitive instinct inside of us, right? Yes. Yes, Crazy. it is. Um, so I love that. You know, I love this whole course. And, you know, I, I, I like many of our students, like funk, like pure funk. But we also all like taking that, moving it into other things that we're playing. Yes. Could be jazz. There's... I hear a lot of funk and country today, certain modern, you know, yeah. the modern country sound. Um, it's all over pop. It's all over singer songwriter. And I would say that, you know, this course is a great uh, tutorial on how to get that kind of groove guitar Absolutely. funky thing happening. Thanks, Brad. Yes. Um, all right. So I want to do a little quiz. Okay. Tom, Tommy, will you roll that opening track? This is only. <laughs> this is really only for the guys that are, are chimed in on the chat. I want you to listen to this track and tell us if at least three of you can name the inspiration for this track. I'll get uh, Ren to give you a little special prize right now. So play it, Tommy. <laughs> Sam, go ahead and do it. <laughs> Good news. We must have a lot of young folks online. Yeah. This is Curtis Mayfield from Inner City Blues, right? Well, Marvin Gaye. Oh, Marvin yes. Gaye. That's yeah. right. Marvin but Gaye. But I mean, but it's that style. It's it, it, Sorry, you know, Don it, G. Could, it, it, it could easily be a, a Curtis Mayfield track. Curtis Mayfield. But that's the inspiration. It's that time period, right. you know? And you're going to find those grooves because that's that was the sound of the time, you know? Yep. Yeah. Curtis Mayfield, he was a great player, too. Incredible. Unbelievable, right? You need to listen to a Superfly soundtrack. But the 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 most killing one for me is Live at the Bitter End. Have you heard? No. Oh, my goodness. Really? Curtis Mayfield, Live at the Bitter End. Anything you want to know about playing some groove guitar. Yeah. If you don't have anything else, check that out. Yep. Yeah. So, and will do. Yeah. The um, thing about those guys, they created... Um, you know, m much like every genre, you know, they created a vocabulary of groove guitar. Yes. That, you know, w witness um, Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. Right. You know, that that vocabulary is very much alive today. Yeah. Very much being referenced in, you know, so many genres today. And, um, you know, so for those of you that haven't had the pleasure, mm -hmm. Curtis Mayfield. Live um, at the Bitter End. Live at the Bitter Start End. Start there. Check that out. Yeah. Um, you know, check out all, all those players from the 70s, and yeah. you'll find that that work 
um, that they did then and that vocabulary will inspire any, anything you're playing today. Right? Absolutely. Um, let, we have some more folks chiming in from, let's see, Netherlands, uh, Kel Colonna, BC, Switzerland. Oh, my wife's um, from Switzerland. Santa Barbara. <laughs> your wife is Switzerland? Yeah, she is from Maybe Switzerland. it's your wife's family. It could be. <laughs> I don't know if we can count that. <laughs> All right, we'll count it. What the... Uh, New Hampshire, Florida, Rome, Italy. Yeah. We're covering a lot of time zones. Yes. So, you know, we've got folks eating breakfast. We've got folks eating dinner. In Italy, they're probably just having appetizers. An afternoon break. What, what time, what time is, is, it is it in Italy? It's, nope, it's too early for oh. dinner in Italy right now. Um, so it always blows my mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that that was, was great. my eyewash <laughs> telling me. It's 9.35 p.m. in Italy. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry right. about that. It's live broadcast, right? right? Um, the the second course is um, uh, you know we're we're just as excited about. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of courses here at True Fire, right? That, you know that we produced over the years. I think eight hundred and sixty or something like that. We don't have a single course focused on what you can do with a wah pedal right. as a rhythmic tool. Yes. Um, so did we decide what we're calling this course? It was wah grooves or wah, what, 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 up, what up with wah? What up with wah? <laughs> so, um, if you don't already own a wah pedal, yes. okay. Yeah. Um, you, you, you know, start Googling it right now and find a good one because you're going to want one of these. Yes. So talk, uh, just talk about the wah pedal you know right why why is that a cool pedal to have in your arsenal well i i guess firstly it, uh with what a wah pedal does uh just to give an example just you know it it shapes your tone from a and i think the original idea uh, you know came from you know, listening to horn players with their plunger mutes. Yeah. You know, and you're getting being able to get this this envelope in sound. Wah, wah, you know, and and for me, you know what it does uh, with using it uh, as an expression from playing. It can add a vocal quality to what you're playing. The difference between me doing this. Now the same thing with the wah, you know, you need a and then you can begin, you can, uh, you're, you, you, it's almost like a cat crying at that point, mm. you know, um, and, and, and depending on how you use it, that envelope, you be can begin to use that as a tool as, as thinking about it as a vocal expression, mm. you know, um, in that way, melodically, um, I had to put that in, but the course is going to focus on using it in the context of playing grooves. Which is very cool because right. um, a, a lot of players yeah. are known, you know, I think Clapton loved right. the Wah. A lot of leads. Hendrix, Incredible leads. As, it, it, you know, as a tool to kind of flavor, in color up their lead playing. Right. Um, but as a rhythm tool, right. it's crazy cool. Right? Yeah, and 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 what can tend to happen is that someone can go to their wah thinking that the wah pedal is going to make what they're playing sound funky. Mm -hmm. Where I would say that the opposite is going to happen if that's what you think you're using your wah to mm -hmm. do. Um, so at that point, you're not gonna be funky. You're gonna be less funky because you're not using it in a way that's enhancing the expression of what you're playing. And, and what I mean, mean by that, let's just say, uh, I just have to play something off the top of my head. Let's just say this is the groove. Wah, one, two, three, four. Okay, and I think, okay, now I'm going to click on the Y, and I, I'm going to try to do it in a way 
I'll drum, do my best to do it in a way that you shouldn't do, do it. Do it wrong, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so we're here. Uh. Oh, right. To me, that sounds like a complete mess. Uh -huh. And all I'm doing at this point is counting p quarter notes on the wah pedal. Right. And that can be what people tend to do right. with a 16th note groove. And they're like, oh, no, I'm just going to go waka, waka, waka. No, there should be, we should make a new little symbol with a, <laughs> a thing going through that says no, you know, waka, waka, and, <laughs> and, and, and relate it to wah pedal. Because <laughs> when you're listening to this, what I'm hearing is the pulse of it. So turn it on the wire, then you're going to put it. As opposed to. I'm playing the exact same thing with my right hand. I right. can barely do it because it, to me it sounds so completely wrong. Right. But that's what you don't want to do with a yeah. wah pedal. So the purpose of going through some of the things in, in the wah course will be to get you away from thinking you're going to rely on the wah to make what you're playing sound funky. Mm -hmm. You should already start with your funky groove and then think, how am I going to use that wah to just add that extra f spice, mm -hmm. to add that vocal uh, quality to it to enhance it's like adding a seasoning to your dish mm -hmm. you don't want to over season it it uh, and the other element with the wah that sometimes gets overlooked is just when you're when you're sustaining a chord you can add movement to it um for just anybody's going to know c major chord and then with the wah you can and once that pulse is going, that's your beat. And depending on the tempo of your song, mm -hmm. you can think about using the wah in that way uh, and just let your, your chords float. Or mm -hmm. they can and, and, and create a pulse in that way. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw a, a, a breakdown on, on, on YouTube. I just watched it last night where a, a guy was looking at uh, Lannis Moore said Jagged Little Pill uh -huh. and one of the tunes on there. And actually, there's, there's like the heavy grunge is like, dang, dang, dang. and then in the background, Jay Grayton, who's a master producer, actually had a wah part that was doing a, an eighth note envelope. And it just, even with the heavy guitars, it created this pulse like yeah and jay you know and you know it's uh, uh no glenn ballard the, just the master producer i mean that's you know i was like man he, that's who would have thought that you would have yeah, used exactly. to use it in that kind with a, yeah. like a serious hard rock you know groove yeah. and just creep that y and making that look one of those kind of little pulses you know yeah that's a really interesting piece you know we do tend to tap our foot right in quarter notes yes and that's the first thing we try to do with the wah pedal. You oh, know? my goodness. And it, it's one of, you know, a lot of the effects floor pedals or, you know, have wah effects that yeah. tend to kind of do that same thing. Right. You know, um, so you're really saying you, you need to get a wah pedal and you need to kind of figure out how to access yes. the right parts yes. of the already funky rhythm. Right. Right. The wah pedal is an instrument. In itself, that's right, and not in a in the sense like other effects that you turn them on and they do what they do. Yeah, I guess maybe aside from an envelope filter, okay, so that interacts with your plan. But you know, you're gonna turn your tremolo on or a delay or your chorus or your roto vibe or whatever the other right. pedal it may happen to be. It's doing its thing. Yeah, you have constant control over the wah pedal. Yeah, and um, so in that aspect, it's like learning an, another instrument. So yeah. in this uh, course, um, Wah Grooves, you take us through 10 Wah Groove kind of performance studies. Yes. Can, let, let's do a few of them. Okay. Give everyone kind of a little taste. Okay. Uh, Tommy, what, which one do you want to do first? You son of a bag. <laughs> son of a... Okay, sure. Bye. 
Now, for each of these, um, you'll do a performance. Yes. And then you'll break it down to kind of show us the, you know, what chord, what you're doing with your right hand. Right. And most importantly, what you're doing with the wah. Yes. Um, you can't see this, but uh, Tommy is broadcasting when you're playing yes. a composite so they can see what you're doing down there. All right, there dig, with it, your dig it, dig it. Um, so pick another track. Tommy, pick another track. Sure. Yep. You know, in that I talked about not doing the, 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 the playing the, you know, tapping your foot to the beat. Yep. That particular group, you actually do do that. But it's working in this country because that's what I'm playing. Right. It's playing the quarter notes through the whole right. thing. So that's what I mean. This is the part. So when the wah is coming in, that's what it's accentuating. Mm -hmm. Because I am playing those, yeah. that so the quarter key note. Right. then is um, creating the funky rhythm part first, yes, and then using the wah to emphasize or accent the funky parts. That yeah, there that you go. Part, right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, a couple of questions. Yes. Ready? Yes. Um, well, he here here's a comment. How would you address this comment? Okay. Takes. It seems like it would take a lot of practice, Dennis says. Yes. Talk about how you would go about practicing. Right. Practicing to use the wah. Practicing to use the wah and to get your right hand thing happening. Right. What's a great way to practice? You know, I think a good place to start could be like, you know, putting on a metronome, picking a tempo that feels comfortable, and then you could just start with, Strumming a chord, let's say your chord, you know, you can just do this. And feel, begin to feel the, that rhythm with your wah foot. It's, it's, it's tricky. <laughs> you know, that's a good place to start. 
just to get used to moving that pedal in a, in, at a tempo. Um, and the other thing that you can also do is, is, is just begin to feel the, get used to the envelope of the, of the wah too. So even if you're just doing this, then to begin to feel. Notice I'm always ending on. So um, uh, I think that's good. Before you get into wek, 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 you know, all these other things, just those simple feeling those pulses. Um, I would look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So trying, mm. starting slower. Starting slower. And working on sinking your foot. Sinking your foot. sort of what your right hand is right. doing rather than what the down, what the beats are, the chord yes. notes are doing. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, another question yep. here. Um, well, somebody wants to know, we usually do gear at the end. Okay, tell sure. Them they want to know what that pedal, the OCD pedal is. Oh, we didn't get there, but that's that's like a cool game pedal. And with the Y, it works super duper, you know. <laughs> you know, but you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because you know, even though the course is not focusing on on the leads, the you know using the Y in that way, you know, can completely change the characteristic of a line, even if it's something as simple as, and then playing the exact same notes or. I'm playing the exact same thing. So that's what I'm saying. The wah can become a, its own instrument. And that was enveloping into the note. And it works in the other direction as well. And, and once you get that deep into it, then it's just like I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. you know, Brad. I'm not going to go, hey, I'm Brad. Right. Blah, blah. You know, you... Right. you that you know vocal, what you're, the vocal right. quality you're talking about. You know about. what you're trying to say. Right. And then, because you've experimented with it, you know how you want to make those inflections yeah. when you're talking. Yeah. Just like when you're trying to get my point across right. to you. That's the same thing with that wah in that lead way. <laughs> oh. It's a completely different feeling. Yeah. And, and, and music is all... That's what it should be about, the feeling that's coming and that, that emotional thing that's coming across and then connecting that with the groove and then everything's just coming into mm -hmm. that perfect nice melt. So, so thanks for asking about the OCD pedal yeah. because, uh, yeah, we wouldn't have gone there otherwise. Well, All right. <laughs> um, uh, Thomas Forrest asks, hi, Carl, can you demonstrate how you incorporate single note lines and phrases into your funky strumming? Into okay, cool. Okay, so so let's just say, uh, uh, let's say, uh, let's just say we're doing this. And the other thing that's cool is sometimes with the single notes is to keep the, you can keep the scratch going too. So single note scratch, you know, a lot of that I covered in the Funk Guitar Survival Guide. So, you know, it, it, those single note lines like that. Or, and, and mixing that in with a, with a chord, let's just say that. Bump. Excellent question. 
Awesome, man. Shout out to France and New Zealand. They just chimed in. All right, awesome. Isn't that crazy, man? Yeah. All over the world, right? Ça va? Okay. All right. <laughs> Very good. Yes. You know, there's a guy, I always mention this in pretty much every live broadcast, but uh, there's at least one player in Antarctica. Yes. And when he chimes in, I know we've got every time zone in every continent. That's incredible. You know? Where are you, Antarctica? All right. Um, a couple of quick questions. Uh, well, any recommendations for buying a Wawa pedal? I still have an original Crybaby from the late 60s somewhere in the house. You're playing a what, Buddha? Yeah, this is a Buddha. Um, you know, you have to find them on the used market now uh, because they're, they're the original, you know, Buddha manufacturer, they, they switched over. But, you know, they're, you can find them online very yeah. easily, yeah. But that's your favorite, that, right? Yeah, I'm using that one. I have another one that's on my pedal board that's, that's customized that has a – that's a little more aggressive. So when you back off on it, it really growls, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, that's kind of my signature tone on, my, on mm -hmm. my pedal board. Yeah. Because every time I use it, they're like, what's happening with that walk? That's your little you know? secret <laughs> sauce there, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, it's a heavily modified pedal. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I love the Buddha. The Buddha, this one's really great for like this, the, the clean kind of rhythm grooves that I'm mm -hmm. doing with the course. It's, it, it, it works really great. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, but Crybaby worked just yeah. as well. Uh, any Dunlop, you know, you know Crybaby pedal is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you find heavier or lighter gauge strings more conducive for these funky groove parts? Right. Well, I'm playing on, I'm playing on tens. You know, when I started at, you know, started out, I was on nines. Yeah, I mean, you got like guys like Josh Smith. They're like, I think he plays on 12s on his electric guitar. It's like something really. I think 13s. Man. Yeah, I mean, that's nuts. That's crazy. But when you hear him playing, you, w I mean, it certainly doesn't, doesn't sound like sound he's like struggling. It. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's a matter of you're going to find a gauge that works for you. Um, you know, the 10s work for me. But they may not work for you. But if you've been playing on a lighter gauge, then you know, and 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 maybe if that's feeling too loosey goosey, then then kick it up to a mm -hmm. ten. Or if you've been using heavier strings, then go down a gauge. You know, that's something you really have to experiment. So I mean, the yeah. string gauge you're saying is really more of a personal thing. It's not a requisite to be able to play a funky part. Absolutely not. Right? No. Um, Can you also talk about riffs in funk? Like, <laughs> you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers, for example. Okay. You know, not so much a lick, but, you know, a part, a riff that is kind of the signature, almost melodic statement in a song. Um, let me, th I mean, I'm trying to think of something that comes to mind off the top of my head, and I'm sorry that I'm... Like Voodoo Child, I guess, would have right. that type of a riff. Right. right. Me for the wild pedal. Yeah, absolutely. You know, quink, 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 quink. Pussy. You know, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay, thanks. Threw a curveball at you. Yeah. You nailed it, man. Yeah. Somehow, the only thing that was automatically coming out was just like thinking about funky riffs that everybody knows. And I'm sure this is going to be, you probably played this one a few times yourself. Uh, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Of course I did. Because I tried to be one. Okay. <laughs> um, any. Um, let, hey, let's play another, because we're running out of time, oh, and wow. I want to play another couple from the course. Okay. From the walk course. Sure. This, this walk course, you know, and, and also, Ren, will you please publish, I kind of screwed up the quiz all by myself, so I don't want to penalize people for that. Please publish a 30% uh, promo code uh, that they can use. I, I, I really encourage you guys to get Carl's first too far course that Funk Guitar Survival okay. Guide. I mean, uh, there's a lot of questions here. How do I start? Where do I start learning? The, right. the Survival Guide is absolutely, I think, you know, the best place to right. start. And both of these courses are, are great standalone. They yeah. Certainly, if they're your first Carl Burnett experience, they'll serve you very well. Yes. But they really complement that first course as well. So Q is going to post a promo code for all of you guys that are on the chat right now. Um and, uh, you know, we do appreciate you 
chiming in from all over the world, having breakfast, lunch, dinner, and midnight snacks with us, yes. maybe even waking up in the middle of the yeah. night for all I know. Um, here's another track from uh, Wah Guitar Grooves. Right Tommy? Uh-oh, part two. crazy man you know and if there was any testimony to why you get all these high profile gigs with all these high profile <laughs> artists it's right there man it's all about groove guitar isn't it yes that, and and that's what you know all these players that are known for their soloing abilities and um they dream about having a killer rhythm section. It's right. all about having a killer right. rhythm section. And you play guitar like you play. Um, that keeps you up on the bandstand at the local gym. That gets you invited right. back. Absolutely. Gets you the gigs. Keeps you the gigs. And um, you know, I, I can't I can't stress enough how um, you know the material in your courses while they are certainly rooted in funk and soul and that Motown and R&B stuff, um, that's the stuff that makes it happen in every style across right. every genre. So, yes. Uh, and no one does it better than you, man. Well, thanks, Brad. Um, <laughs> couple, uh, tell, uh, tell folks yeah. about your guitar. They want to know about the um, guitar. This guitar, um, well, it's, it's a Fender Telecaster, and, and it's a real one. It's, I've had it for quite a number of years now. The neck date is '68, and um, and it and it and it's very special to me in that you know for a '68 neck, and it but it even has a little bit of figuring in it, which is kind of cool. And I was and um, I was you know at the custom shop sometime, and I had my had this with me, and I was showing it to uh, to Alex there, and I was like, man, I didn't even know that 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 you know Fender was doing like bird's eye back then. He goes, oh no, well they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> so because you say, yeah, you just that just happened to be what came off the, uh -huh. you know. Wow. So that's what makes it, you know, really special. But yeah, it's a it's a '68, and it's, uh, um, yeah, the 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 paint's not original. I mean, I think that's a refin. Like the, are the pickups original? Yeah, yeah, they nice. are. Yeah, 
that's original and 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 I swapped out that they, they had these kind of I don't know those, those some Callahan you know uh, br uh, brass uh, saddles there which yeah. are kind of cool those are compensated so the intonation is a little bit better but yeah um, Telly is a perfect guitar for for R and B yeah for you sure. know it, it's a n it's a no nonsense guitar um, and and I'm sure anyone who's playing a Telecaster is going to tell you that is that it's not a forgiving kind of an instrument you know you have to commit to what it is you're playing on it in, in, a, in a certain way because it it's not doing a lot of you know you really got to put not into it not covering up a lot no of it's, stuff. Not, it's not going to cover anything <laughs> no. you know like a strat sounds funky just because it's tone yeah has a certain kind of a funk yeah. to it you know well it's right the, you know also the versatility of a yeah. telly you know uh country yeah. rock blues funk soul yep. r&b you know yeah. it's got to be sort of uh versatile and uh you know you have to tame it a little bit for the style you're playing yeah. i guess is the best yeah. way to put it um a couple more questions yes um well, one of these, you know, what chords do you recommend learning for funk? Which is really interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, you're playing very, um, you're, you're not playing a lot of big bar chords per se. That's an excellent question. You know, and to talk to them also about really what's making the difference there are these smaller chords with all the little embellishments yep. you're playing. Just talk to that a little bit. Sure. One one way that, one thing that you can begin to, to look at um, like Barry was saying, instead of you're you're making these kind of you know, if you know you're you're on A minor, as opposed to playing, you know, get used to making. One way to approach it is beginning to look at just voicing, making your voicings on the top three strings. So, for instance, let's say we're playing this. And like, okay, well, by itself, well, what is that? Well, okay, well, it's a B minor triad. And if the song were to happen to be in B minor, but if it happens to be, it t it's a whole different quality. Mm -hmm. So then it's become, you know, in, in the key of E, it's become a flat seven and a nine, and, and, and that's the, the chord of every, you know, most of the James Brown groups, so, you, know, you know. So work on getting your voicings, you know, finding those, you know, there's a lot of triad voicings, um, your major triads, uh, minor triads. Uh, and the other thing, that's cool with getting these kind of kind of funky tones it, is putting some seconds in your voicings too. I remember seeing something about Shane specifically talking about that yeah, in yeah. one of his Mojo right. classes. You know, um, and that just gets such a with those seconds on the bottom. And they're like, well, what can I do with that? Well, once again, if you're in E. And then if you're in B minor, you know, it's still going to, it can give you a certain tone. And, and, and even when they're, when they're major chords, uh, let me see, because you know, that gives you a certain quality with, with, with having some seconds in your voicings. But start with those major and minor triads all along here, so if it's the F major, if it's C major, you know, just work, work on those, you know, uh, um, let's say, uh, just trying to tell everybody you can hear where the harmony is, right? So you got, see what's happening there? Larry Carlton's the master of that. Oh, yeah. You know, it's you great. Know? <laughs> it, it, absolutely. And right. I, I, I don't know, in some cosmic way, yeah. lately, there's been a lot of focus with the artists we're working on. Yeah. On, 
staying away from those big bar chords, yeah. learning their triads, how much music can be made with right. the triads, it's, and then embellishing the triads a little and let the bass player do yes. their thing. And especially in funk, there's a lot of bass right. going on there, yeah. right? Yeah. So you don't need to play those root notes unless you need to get that bottom sound. Mm -hmm. Is really what you're saying, yeah. right? And then the other thing is once you begin to hear those those notes within the triads, those chord tones, those are ways that you can also expand your your lead playing mm. too. And when I was thinking about Larry, that's something he makes a lot yeah. of use of um, because when you start getting these these intervals with the triads, um, guys, that's a whole different subject. But <laughs> depending on what's happening with the bass and right. the rest of the harmony, yeah. then you're getting these extra notes in the extensions of the chords um, so for anybody, no matter what you're doing, whether you're working on little funk grooves or you want to find some ways to embellish your, that's what you're saying. You can cross the genres with mm -hmm. the information. So even if you're taking material from an R&B course or a groove course like the one we're talking about, you can still pull some of those informations out of there. And and even like one of the examples has a one, six, two, five. Right. That's, okay. We're not going into a harmony class. Right. But then I encourage, I say, wait, and if you're learning some material from one of your jazz courses, now you can also incorporate that here because, hey, you got a few different changes right. to, 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 to blow over after you lay down yeah. your groove. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Um, well, it's a great yeah. point. It's a great point you're making about uh, learning the triads. Yeah. We had actually our last live broadcast was with Rob Garland, mm. and he did a thing on chord tone soloing. There you go. You know? And, right. and the cage system and learning the triads. Yes. You know your triads. You know the three most important right. tones to target right. and resolve to. And, yeah. Right? Right. Um, right. Thank you, man, for, for spending this hour with us. I know you got to finish up your course and stuff. Yes. Um, every, you know, you have a lot of fans all over the world here. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, yeah. A lot of folks that, you know, dig... Um, you know, your first course, you'll you'll be able to read this later. Yeah. Um, Funk Guitar Survival Guide. Look out for these two new upcoming courses. Um, the WA course is going to be very well received, I'm sure. Um, it's been it's been conspicuous by its absence yeah. in our library, you know. And the Groove Guitar Take Five is going to be sensational. Right. So if you want to step up your your rhythm game, your groove game, you've got two incredible courses on their way to you. Um, let's roll a track. Yes. Play us out. Yes. And, uh, you know, say see you later to all your friends out there around the world, man. Okay, thanks, everybody, for chiming in. And for Switzerland, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Danke vielmals, if you're in, in, in Swiss and Dutch. <laughs> and, uh, very good. Hope to see you guys, uh, you know, look me up online and uh, reach out with any, uh, you know, post some videos. Let's we'll see what you're doing. There you go, yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, man. Thanks, Brad. Tommy, what you got for us? Let's do that level four from the take five. Two funk, is that all right? Okay. <laughs> Whatever the heck that was, right? <laughs> oh, I know what it is. It's the cameo one. Okay. Right. <laughs> Rogers, right?